There has always been discussion about what makes Tibetan Buddhism unique and, and Tibetan art. Well, there's many, many different reasons for this, uh, both uh, in art, visual culture, and, and abstract concepts, uh, teachings, literature, etc. But I prefer to, to frame it as, uh, what are the Tibetan influences on Buddhism? Because these are sometimes the more obvious of, of the subjects. So we can take the first one, um, is the Tibetan katak, the, the white scarf. The white scarf is uh, an introduction to Buddhism. This is really, it appears to be coming from uh, Tibetan culture and uh, the Bun religion, and it's related to the mutak. Uh, the mutak is a kind of, uh, of a woolen scarf, um, but also the mutak is related to the cord that connects the original Tibetan people to the gods realm. So it's like a, an astral cord. It, it's, a, it's this uh, spiritual link to the heavens. Many, many uh, old and early Tibetan families claim to be descended from the, the clear light gods of the heavens. Um, uh, long before the Buddhist notion of uh, Avalokiteshvara and Tara and, and uh, a monkey and, a, and an ogress. This is all later, later Buddhist uh, um, origin mythology coming in. Uh, so the white scarf is, is one of the most obvious. Uh, prayer flags. Prayer flags most likely began in the, in the Xining area of Qinghai province. And uh, they're very much a, a Bun cultural phenomenon early on. Uh, but, but Buddhists did have flags, but they had a different kind of flag. They had uh, religious banners where you have sutras or various dharani uh, written on them. And, uh, and then they were not meant to be thrown into the wind and carried uh, um, to different places. The, the banners were put up in, in temples or religious compounds for the Buddhists. Then we have we have the the Torma designs. Torma are the sacrificial food offerings that are very commonly found in, in temples, uh, Tibetan temples. Uh, now the, the concept of food offerings it comes from India, but all of the elaborate designs, uh, colors, ornamentation of them is truly a, a Tibetan phenomena. And along with that, we have the torpar, which is the carved wooden uh, sticks uh, with images of animals and, and symbols and living beings um, carved into it. So when you press dough into the, the carved impression, then you can get a, a, a dough image. And then these are placed on shrines for various uh, ritual uh, services. Dance and music are, are both uh, um, Tibetan influences. We, we did not have this in, in India. Um, and even some uh, monastic colleges in India to this day do not allow <clears throat> music in the college. Uh, then we have hats. Hats are, are really unique. From India, we do have the, the concept that we have the Pandita hat. Uh, but uh, th there's not a lot of actual evidence or, or, or uh, any recorded literature that talks about the Pandita hat from the Sanskrit or Prakrit side. Um, it's mostly a Tibetan claim. Uh, but all of the fancy hats, the black hats, the red hats, the, the, the lotus hat, all of these are, are really a, a Tibetan um, cultural invention, even commented on by, by Atisha in one of the biographies of Atisha, where he was, he was surprised by the variety of hats uh, as he saw them from a distance and, and thought that they were some... Uh, demon army or something really weird uh, group of beings approaching when it was actually Tibetans wearing all these elaborate hats. So there's just a few of, of the many things that, uh, that we see, uh, but these are some of the more popular, more common, the prayer flags, the white scarf, um, dance, music, uh, and hats.